D. Bradley Muir, uh, primarily I work in photography, that seems to be the case, but I did a double major in photo and uh, sculpture, and I don't really like to pigeonhole myself as just a photographer. So I like to I do video, film, a uh, bit of yeah, like old 8mm, and uh, lots of installation, photo-based stuff as well. Uh, this is, uh, this piece is um, based on a work that I had done in Victoria uh, and sort of a branch off of that uh, called At Odds with Emily, which uh, was a series of flats, these sets that I built in my studio and then uh, brought out in the landscape and photographed them where areas where Emily Carr most likely created some of her paintings and then I referenced those paintings by using them within this ready to hang art mode of going to a, a shop and buying work that's already framed and is going to fit into your house decor and represent you in some kind of, as some kind of personal, uh, personality. Uh, but I wanted to talk about how that landscape had changed in relation to the romantic notions that were cast upon it by Emily Carr and particularly by people who look at the work of Emily Carr uh, not so critically, not considering uh, maybe the more in-depth levels of the work she was doing. So this work, um, which is uh, Faith, Ignorance and Desire uh, in Dune with Homer Watson. So this sort of, that phrase comes from a title of a book and a uh, relationship that I think uh, that title was almost perfect for me because a lot of the subtitling of these works are based on the names of the paints that I use and catchphrases that exist within uh, real estate sales pitches like dream home, homes, uh, dreams for sale, um, uh, live in par living in paradise, owning a piece of paradise, paint titles such as The Grand Valley, uh, um, Summer Mist, Pumpkin Yellow, all of these sort of impossible promises that relate the landscape to this idea of decorating one's home to be somehow more natural and more and capable of doing something which of course it's incapable of, which is representing them as an individual. So uh, when I there was a great moment when I was shopping for uh, the paints and some of the hardware equipment here at Home Depot, where they uh, broadcast over the PA system that they had on their website uh, six easy questions that if you uh, fill them out, they can tell you what kind of home best represents you and how to decorate your house. So this kind of deals with that and that sort of tenuous relationship with the landscape and the effect that it has on the landscape. In terms of framing, the work is, um, this is where I see the relationship between photography and sculpture and pigeonholing myself as a photographer to be problematic because I think that in many cases that this type of installation, the actual physical structure, is sometimes more photographic than the actual photographs because of the fact that it is framing and it is uh, in a, in a three-dimensional sense creating the illusion or attempting to, to engage in the illusion that a photograph creates by its limited frame. And so depending upon where you stand, you end up taking these sort of fragmented uh, real-time photographs, if you will, of what's in or out of uh, the field of view, whether it be through the window, which is meant to have a much more romantic uh, relationship with the landscape or idealized, and then that which exists outside of that, this set, which is of course the world that we live in, which in many cases is what the camera uh, omits. So it would be very easy to, for me to create the illusion of this being a picturesque non-suburban space without opening up this field. Uh, the photograph in City Hall is sort of the pair to this photograph. Um, it uses the exact same uh, paints, which were easy to find. I knew there'd be a Home Depot here. I bought them at the Home Depot there. Um, and I photographed that flat, that set, in Victoria with the intention of making it look like I photographed it here in Kitchener. So after doing a bit of research, it didn't take long to realize that uh, short, very sort of flat rolling hills with a lot of corn would uh, satisfy the uh, landscape aesthetic of Kitchener. I was actually uh, surprised when I got here. 
of how accurate that was and how little it had changed. There's uh, the developments are just starting to happen here in terms of suburban sprawl and so these new uh, um, communities that are that are defining themselves at uh, the whim of um, at the whim of, of developers. And someone's been playing with your laundry basket. They have. Could be the squirrels, I think. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.